Welcome to NBA Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I just go loopy. It's Looney, you fool. I, you have your things, I have mine. <laughs> uh, and also joining us is Sapphire Heart Songs. You know it's not funny if you have to explain the joke, right? I'm making some random Batman reference I sort of know. It's a reference from my pub, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and also joining us is Maddie Munchkin. I'm a little bit of a fan girl for what we're talking about today, so I am so happy to be here. Yep. And on today's episode review, we are going to talk about DC's latest entry to their animated movie, Batman The Killing Joke. Oh boy, this is... Whew. Wait, you mean we're not here to talk about the Bat Blood music video? Oh. No, I don't think so, was there? Cause baby, now we got bad blood. <laughs> You're worse than the English. Oh god. God, I hate you so much. Uh, no, we used to be best buds. <laughs> but now we got bad blood. Ah! Uh, but anywho, uh, how do we usually do this for the ponies? Ah, oh, boy. Okay, anyway, um, Batman, the killing joke, directed by Sam Lui. Based on the Batman The Killing Joke book by uh, Brian Ballonden and Alan Moore. Is that how you say his name? Yes. Brian Brian the, Brian Boland. Bo- ah, Brian Boland. The servant of the the servant of the Snake Lord, Alan Moore. <laughs> yeah. So starring Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, Tara Strong, and Ray Wise. So uh, how how do I summarize this? This is basically all the bad stuff happens. <laughs> Everybody in Gotham needs to get laid. That's how you summarize it. <sighs> oh yeah, and Joker's there too. From what I understand, this is the story of how the Joker became the Joker. Is that right, Maddie? It's kind of giving a story, a possible backstory. It's not the backstory, according to the co- comic. The, the movie didn't really deliver it properly, in my opinion, anyway. Um his past, if he's going to have a past, it might as well be multiple choice. So it's like he can't remember what, exactly what happened that made him this way, but something did, and that was just one version of how he remembers it. Or, um, But at the same time, in regards to actual canon, this is a standalone comic, and as is the movie. So many people were just putting it down and saying it's ruined the animated series, and I'm like, but it's not that. It's it's not related to the animated series. So <laughs> right. uh, never mind. I'll stop. I will take over. Yeah, soon. <laughs> but still, what about you, man? I will. <laughs> well, one, I I don't see how anyone can say this is ruined the animated series for yeah. Harley. Qu- Harley Quinn did not exist at the time of this comic, if I remember right. Yeah, she was seen oh. on the uh, screen at one of the, um, you know, like, scenes in the movie. Was she? No, you know yeah, what? Yeah, she, it was yeah. for like a brief second. They had like Joker's memory files or whatever. Yeah, and if you look at each picture on the screen, it's actually referencing either a Batman movie or a comic. Because you see the Joker's in the Heath Ledger pose in one picture, so that's the Dark Knight Joker, and then there's one that's more similar to Cesar Romero, and then there's a scene that's uh, from the Mad Love comic, which is why Harley's there, so it's just a reference kind of thing, even though this comic was made in 1988, and Harley Quinn was um, created in 1992, I think. Although it doesn't really make sense for her to be there, it's it's just a fun reference, I think. <laughs> I'll, I'll anyway. just I'll just throw this out there, nerd. Uh, but anywho, I love that nerd. nerd. <laughs> I, See, uh, somebody loves me. <laughs> oh, come now, you, you know you are much beloved. Yeah. Yay! But it's Yay! but it's. I'm accepted. <laughs> but I enjoyed this this movie. This well, okay. Let me be clear. I enjoyed the original. No. If I say original, people think I mean the first 30 minutes. Uh Uh, I enjoyed the actual killing joke part of the story. The the 30-minute intro was just an exercise in cringe for me. We shall we shall go in depth on this, I understand, but Mm -hmm. it's it's a dark movie, but it shows why the Joker 
is such a beloved villain. Mm -hmm. And that's somewhat important. That is why villains appeal to us. What is it they bring to their role? Mm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but no, I'm I'm good. I'm done. We let us to the next person. Oh boy. This is coming from somebody who is not exactly a Batman fan, although I know the basic references. This movie scared the crap out of me. I was thinking, like, okay, sure, I recognize the animation art style from the uh, animated series, even though I haven't seen it, because it's that iconic, apparently. But as soon as I watch this movie, it's like, is this what I'm getting into if I were to ever... <laughs> somehow find myself watching Batman, like, now? Is this what I'm going to see? Am I going to see Barbara Gordon wanting to get laid with Batman, even though that's probably not how she was originally written, and am I going to have to... Was this what the animated series was like, was my opinion. Uh, well, was what I was like when I first <laughs> saw it. It's like, what did I just watch? <laughs> Uh, well, I think my mind is a bit messed up after watching this, especially the second half with the um, Barbara Gordon's father. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this mind's... I'm... Uh, bleh. It leaves you speechless, don't it? Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> well, I think we should really uh, go to the point of who here has read the original source, which is the... Killing Joe comic. So it seems that mm. Silver has said that he has. Uh, Maddie? Yep. All right. It's the only graphic novel I have read that has actually brought me to tears. Mm. So, and yeah. Sapphire <laughs> here has said that this is her first Batman encounter? Well, yeah, oh, pretty yeah. much. All right. You never forget your first. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and apparently this was it. And I only watched it because... Some people have been like, briefly talking about it in like certain chats I've been in, and then I saw the review for Maddie. It's like, okay, yeah, oh yeah, yeah sure, sure, it's my fault. Hard to swallow. Her dice yes. card. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sure, it's hard to swallow. Ah ha ha! I can handle it. Then me. I should have heeded her warning. Way to go, Maddie. That's my fault. <laughs> scarred for life. So I know how I got scars. <laughs> bad Munchkin, it's her fault. <laughs> God, Maddie. Maddie, I love you. Oh my God, Maddie. As for me, um, I have not read the Killing Joke comic, but I am versed in most of the DC animated movies where I have watched almost all of them. And the Justice League cartoon series and the Batman animated series. So yeah, I'm kind of well versed in some of the nerddom of the bats. <laughs> the Batman animated series, followed by the animated series about Batman. Then there was mm -hmm. the Batman animated show. Uh, then there was the an the animation <laughs> of Batman. And then Batman Brave and the Bold. Uh, and, then, and then the Batman CGI animation. <laughs> oh yeah, that one's pretty have, good. Yeah, I still haven't seen that yet. Oh, technically it's good. That was I a like thing. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all I'm saying is I'm I, I am in a sense Batman out. <laughs> uh, I've hmm. I've grown somewhat frustrated that the answer to everything is because I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but still, uh, I don't know where to jump from this point on because well we've said a lot of things about well the first half hour. So shall we just jump right in and tell people that spoilers are hit if you haven't watched this like. What are you waiting for? It's a really interesting movie, so go watch it. Mm -hmm. So no, what are you crazy? Start for life. Yeah. <laughs> what are you crazy? <laughs> uh, oh, yes. God. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think we should just jump right in. Um, we're not going to go for scene by scene because it's a, a two-hour-long movie. Nobody wants to talk about Barbara Gordon trying to. Seduce Batman. No, like... technically this is the first half hour we're going to talk about because what the hell? Mm. Uh, well, mm. Yeah, that that is where where the seduction occurs. It's like you can't be near me. I'm broody <laughs> and upset, <laughs> and I stare into the void. And I'm just making you hotter for me, aren't I? <laughs> well, considering uh, uh brain, ugh. what the hell? I can't even say the original ca character's name right. Bruce Wayne. Is a playboy, isn't he? Like, no. isn't philanthropist? But yeah, basically. Well, he's a he's a 
Billy, he's a billionaire playboy philanthropist. Yeah, everybody wants him. I'm just impressed I said that word right. Yay. <laughs> we are very Fast. proud of you, Munchkin. <laughs> Yay! Here's so, a cookie. Our, our little Munchkin is growing up. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, this first half hour here is a setup for introducing Barbara Gordon or Batgirl into the movie because beforehand, we haven't really met her in all of the previous Batman or in all of the previous uh, DC animated movie. This is her first appearance, right? Well, she briefly appeared at the end of Batman Bad Blood. Mm -hmm. But that was the version of the newer version, right? Like the reborn version? Like, I, I don't know. The problem with comic books, they reboot everything. Like, ay ay ay. Batman Beyond. Hey. Well, Batman no, Beyond. I'm... Actually, here's the thing. If everyone's getting upset <laughs> that Batman and Batgirl did the, the bat <laughs> it that oh way. My. He, mm. he, sh he showed her his full utility belt. Okay. <laughs> oh my. Uh, she, he snuck into her bat cave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, basically, the Batman Beyond already implied that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I yes. kind of mentioned that in my review as well. So yeah. So, so, <laughs> get, so getting upset about that to me is not as much a priority as it is the incredibly lackluster villain that they introduced for this first mm -hmm. thirty minutes. Talk about a villain I give no figs about. Isn't he supposed to be, like, some weird mafia guy who has a thing for Batgirl? Uh, that's 90% of the fans, minus the mafia part. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he is... He's a crime boss's son who has ambitions, gets sort of into a gang war, but he has no real... Batman's rogue gallery is full of colorful characters that leave an impression. Mm -hmm. This guy is just a punk kid with a weird fixation on Batgirl. That's it. Even paid a hooker to get her to dress up like the, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. that's not weird. Yeah. No. <laughs> totally. That's, that's totally normal in Gotham. I, the sad part is it probably is. <laughs> uh... I mean, I know what they were trying to do. They were kind of trying to have a parallel um, Joker for Batgirl. You know, like it's it's a villain that's obsessed with her and doesn't um, take her all that seriously. It was just so painfully obvious that's what they were trying to do that it it just made it unwatchable for me for the, the first half hour. It is not just because this wasn't in the comic. It just felt so... It wasn't interwoven into the rest of the story at all. Like, after that happened... It's like a completely separate episode altogether that was just tagged onto the intro because they had to <laughs> fill the, the, the run time because of the, the Killing Joke comic, it's, it's, there's not enough there to fill an hour and a half. They had to have the intro there and to get to know Batgirl before all the, the horrible stuff happens. So I understand why that was added, but it could have been interwoven into the story so much better instead of just, oh, it just felt so separate. Yes. Honestly, when it comes to introducing a new character on screen, to me how they handled this was kind of interesting in a way where I don't mind it so much, except for the bumping uglies. That was kind of force. Well, let's talk about let's mm. talk about someone apparently snuck aphrodisiacs into Gotham's water supply because ninety percent of the populace is just all that. That's all they talk about. <laughs> Are you sure it's not written by Ellen Moore? Wait, it is written by Ellen Moore. Oh God. Mm. Who? The the writer. The writer. Of, <laughs> Does this person have a reputation for writing in a bunch of sex scenes in DC movies or something, or what? Oh, he, he didn't write this movie adaptation. In fact, no. if, any, if anything, I'm sure he he's expressed great frustration at adaptations in the past. He can be an exceptional writer. He can be an awful writer. True of anyone, I think. And he's got exceptionally eccentric. 
I mean, like, you think I'm quirky. <laughs> this guy's it's, quirky to the max. Well, I mean, he's, he's written, he wrote Fever for Vendetta, Watchmen, um, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I totally don't have his Wikipedia page open or anything, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, but yeah, Swamp Thing. I totally have a complete <laughs> idea of what you're talking about because I've totally watched everything that you've mentioned. <laughs> Uh, but honestly, this first half hour, I kind of like how they set everything up just to tell us that Bruce Wayne or Batman here cares a lot for Batgirl or Barbara Gordon. Uh, honestly, that whole bumping uglies was not needed and so creepy. Isn't Barbara Gordon like a college girl, like young college girl? And isn't Bruce Wayne like 40? That's what I... T- so Maddie in the normal show that we she was on like I break down everything to Maddie it says like wait isn't Bruce Wayne in his 40s in this case and Barbara is like a college student or something like that mm-hmm. yeah well, for them college graduate uh, still but for them to bump uglies and to think of that <sighs> Jim Gordon is his best friend or yeah <laughs> yeah well. I mean, I mean, I'm in a relationship where my partner is at least like eight, nine years older than me, but I'm at my limit if it goes to ten. Meanwhile, this girl, <laughs> yeah, she says it for his money. I. Uh, it, this wasn't like a romantic thing. Um, it was more about she was loving being back girl. And she was so intoxicated with the whole experience and wasn't necessarily in love with Batman at all. So, yeah. But at the same time, it we just didn't need it there. Honestly, I yeah. need to ask, like, why? <sighs> like, why was this needed? Like, couldn't they just... Uh, I don't know. It just came out of nowhere. Like, yeah. Why? It's to Ugh. add a, it's to add an emotional component to what happens to Barbara later. Yes. But it's like introducing a character just to die. Mm. Uh, remember, most obvious example I can think of right away. Remember Independence Day, Will Smith's best friend on the Air Force before they fly off for the first time. Mm-hmm. And, and he's cracking jokes and he's having so much yeah. fun and he's so full of life. It's like, you're gonna die. <laughs> We're like, oh, we really like you, but oh yeah, because we like you, that means you're dead. Mm. It's like, Basically every single uh-huh. horror movie ever where, you know, the <laughs> slut goes. The slut is the first to die. <laughs> or at least that's what I've heard from that Sunday show. Or the Cabin in the Woods, but. Uh, I was just pretty much saying the same thing. Yeah. Cabin <laughs> in the Woods. But here, let me make let me make the scene more uncomfortable. Imagine if Batman was starting to get into a little role play. Oh, oh God. God! Why do you want to kill me? <laughs> Why do you want to kill me? <laughs> oh God! I don't know how to. Oh God! <sighs> Batman must have some weird fetishes. Well, he dresses up like a bat every day. You think Owl Man had trouble? Uh, no, <laughs> no idea. But uh, uh, I think we're harping on something that need that something's dying. Like the first, no, no, I, I'm I'm tormenting Norman and and trying to scare him into an into regression. So uh, I, let's I, let's keep going. I don't know. This first half hour is well in terms of trying to explain who Batgirl is and what his relation to Batman is is interesting and why she quit is done interesting but could have been done better i think mm. would you guys agree on that yeah yes mm-hmm. oh but what about the fact that this punk gets the drop on batman so bad i i know he's distracted because he's having the uncomfortable moment with barbara but this is just some punk kid who can't match any of batman's rogues gallery for sheer memorability and yet, we're at, it, the movie's asking us to believe that he's got the drop on Batman. Well, honestly, the way I look at this, or the, the, <laughs> the character's name is Paris French, like, ah. That's his nickname. Yeah, but still. Okay, thank, yeah. thank goodness. Yeah. I thought someone actually named their child that. It's like, that, <laughs> you are so cruel. That freaking hilarious. <laughs> well, but still, God. But anywho, 
to me, this character here, well, he seems like a Mary Sue or Gary Sue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> don't, don't say that, that word. Triggered. No. <laughs> he he seems. I've been summoned. Summoned. Norman. Norman. Yeah. Norman. What I think you thought? triggered Mary Sue. <laughs> but anyway, like I was saying, he seems like an overpowered character just because the sea needed an overpowered character. Technically, he's not needed, but he seems to be there just to push Batgirl's button to prove that she's better and whatnot. But still, this punk here, he has his point where the crime of the newer age has changed. It's all about tech. It's all about the internet age, which it kind of tells us that this is set in a future timeline where a cell phone, computer exists kind of deal. Because in, if I'm not mistaken, in The Killing Joke, that was done in um, 19, oh, let me see, uh, 1988, where um, cell phones and computers were not the norm. Yeah. So they're kind of telling us that, hey, this is in the modern days. So prepare your cell phone cameras and whatnot. To me, that is kind of interesting, but you could have put in anybody in there and it'll do the same job. In fact, put Bane in there. He'll be awesome, I think. Yes? No? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See? No, no, I, need, I need you to enunciate. Yeah. Oh my. He works wonders. Uh, but anywho, uh, what's done is done. I love the arts. Anyway, sorry. What's done is done. We can't really fix it. So we go into the show proper where yeah, uh, where thing just blows up and things are not pretty. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Bane's not in the movie, by I the way. I think Silver is. <laughs> but it, yeah, it's just sort of a, a misadventure for Bad Girl, just so we can feel really bad when something totally unrelated happens that's that's the other weird thing none of this is really lead up to the joker in no. fact it it really does feel like an entirely different movie yeah it's entirely oh. different in atmosphere for one thing a lot of it takes place in the day and the majority of batman films take place at night so it just does not feel like a batman thing at the beginning so uh I'm like, daylight! No! No! It burns us! <laughs> what is daylight doing in a Batman thing? Dear God. <laughs> what was it Batman said in, in year zero? Never in the day, Alfred. <laughs> oh my. Really? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, what was it? Alfred is proposing he go out in the Batmobile. He's like, no, Alfred, never in the day. Hmm. Because crime only takes place night. I am the night. Hear yes. me roar. <laughs> uh, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Although even even better, uh, that does bring us back to the Dark Knight Rises. Hey, I'm here in the middle of the day. Let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I think by that point he has to like he's forced into that situation. He's forced into a bad <laughs> movie, is what he is. What he is. Anyway, yeah, that's besides the point. <laughs> Um, we're talking about the kidding joke here. So, shall we talk about Batman as the character himself? Like, does he portray his role perfectly here? Well, he doesn't really say a whole lot. This is the Joker's movie. Yeah. This is really a Joker movie that happens to star Batman, which is really, that's a template you could use for any DC movie. This is a Justice League movie that happens to focus on Batman. <laughs> this is a Superman movie that happens to feature Batman. We're going to get Justice League Dark, a, a story about magical users in the DC universe that happens to feature a lot of Batman. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not bitter. My friends and I were talking about this last night. Batman has become the babysitter of the DC universe. None of the DC directors are confident that their characters can work unless Batman is on screen to draw the viewers. It's somewhat disappointing. But honestly... Most of the DC characters by themselves are well-established characters. You got Wonder Woman, you got Superman, you got uh, Green Lantern, you got the uh, Green Arrow. I mean, most of them are. Oh, I forgot they rebooted the universe, didn't they? 
<sighs> Multiple okay. times. But uh, for all the presence they have in the comics, in the animated series and movies, it's Batman or nobody. Yeah, true that. <laughs> what, 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 you think Green Lantern's going to when the crowd's back? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you see, the one thing I know about the Green Lantern is his Deadpool. <laughs> And Deadpool, he shall remain. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, but honestly speaking, um, Batman here, uh, he has the most perfect voice. Like, Kevin Conroy here is, has done the Batman since, well, since I was a little kid, and he done it really well. Like, he's, whenever you hear Batman's voice, it's very iconic. There's nobody that could replace his voice. Not even that guy who mm. deepened his voice and make it sound scratchy. What his name was, I don't remember. He doesn't really matter anymore. Ben Affleck? <laughs> ah, Ben Affleck was pretty good. But I'm talking about the other yeah. guy. Who's that guy? Oh! Oh my gosh. Um, Ke- Ke- Keanu Reeves? No. <laughs> what? No, I don't know. Bat- um, I'm going yeah. home, I'm drunk. The Dark Knight, Batman, <laughs> the Batman... Be uh, sure to take the home with you. Hang on. Yeah. To Google! <laughs> uh, you really need to go... It- it, it's funny we can all say Heath Ledger's Joker, but we don't. We can't say Batman. Yeah, Who Christian ba- Bale. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see, we should have bailed out. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But o- honestly, in my personal opinion, Kevin Conroy is Batman. There's no replacing him. He is. He has the perfect voice for the Cape Crusader, except for Adam West. Adam West is memorable too, but in a different way. <laughs> well, old chum. Uh, well, what do you guys have to say about this Batman besides that he doesn't talk much? Well, there's not a whole lot else to say. I mean, he has tender side when he's comforting Barbara in the uh, in the hospital. Yeah, hmm. that was like one of the saddest moments ever. Like, just hmm. the implications of what happened beforehand still like sort of um, makes my jaw drop. Like, did that really just happen? Yeah. <laughs> I think that was the part of the movie that made me um have to pause the whole entire screen mm. on my computer. Like, mm. did that really just happen? Did Joker actually do what I think he did? Hmm. Oh, God. Well, before we jump into that part, let's talk about Batgirl now. Sorry, Maddie, do you have anything to say about Batman? It's Kevin Conroy. Conroy Kevin Conroy is... Batman to me. He is the voice of the Batman for over 20 years. I can't really enjoy an animated movie where it's not Kevin Conroy voicing Batman. It just, it sounds unnatural for anyone else to voice him. But even then, as we say, Batman doesn't really talk all that much. So, but when he does, it's the the voice it's just ah yep it's just perfect memorable. just mm-hmm. perfect yeah we, perfect. we've grown into it mm-hmm. and talking about another it part, might be in his style just walking really but yeah, yeah. True, but the and thing it, is he has that mm-hmm. tone he he brings it out it's really memorable it's mm-hmm. hard to deny that he is the bat I'm the knight mm-hmm. uh, Batman so but talking mm-hmm. about another bat bat girl what about this character was she even in the books oh. She was in the, well. She was in the books. Sadly, she was in the books and had taken the worst fate possible. Oh god. Like I said, I had to pause my screen. Like, did I just really watch that? Mm, I'm not talking about Barbara Gordon here. I'm talking about Bat Girl to begin with because from what I understand, mm. she's not in it, right? Well, Bat, Bat Girl is not in it. it mm. She's not in the original version. She's not, uh, she's not even mentioned as Batgirl, I think. It was originally, the the character was originally invented, I think, for the TV series in the 1960s, just as a female counterpart for Batman. So there's Batwomen, or as she was later known as Batgirl. I think when she was introduced into the animated series in the 90s, if I remember, Nope, it's gone. Never mind. Um, and I haven't really read an awful lot of comics that she's in, so yeah. Okay, no problem. <laughs> but still, they just added this because, well, they wanted to introduce mm. who Batgirl is. Honestly, if she was just Barbara Gordon, that would have worked too. This movie, it's more about Jim Gordon and the Joker. It's not so much about Batgirl and Batman, and this is where 
the movie screwed up, basically. Mm. It, its focus was in the wrong place, but eh. Eh. Yeah. So nothing much to say about the bad girl here, right? Eh? Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. what about Barbara? Anything to say about her too? Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. We, we've been talking Not about this. <laughs> we talked about this a lot, but I, I think some of the viewers may or may not know what happened to her. And who wants to describe what happened? Like, Silver, you, you seem to have been fun. What, what do you think? Oh, I, I mean, let me describe how a, a girl is, is, uh, shot. Paralyzed, violated. Oh, yes. Silver, you're good at this. <laughs> uh, all right. To show, to show Joker is not the same. He's not the same easily foiled comic book cliche villain that people have come to associate. Kind of like the Adam West, uh, mm. villains guy. His first real act to get this plan going after he's stolen uh, a fairground and uh, poisoned the owner. He basically just appears at Barbara's home while her father's there, shoots her in the chest, no, makes a chest. Uh, I think it's in uh, belly. Yep, yeah. belly, and shoots her in the belly, severing her, uh, damaging her spine, and removing her ability to walk. It's implied that he rapes her. Implied, one hundred percent sure. But he definitely takes photos of her in undress while bleeding out. Mm-hmm. And basically, all of this is to show he's taking everything to the next, to what some view is the inevitable conclusion. He is just going to push Batman to the point of either you kill me or I kill you, but we're we're calling this to an end. This is what makes Joker a great villain. He wants to prove that everyone is just like him, that we're all one step away from the Joker, from being as cruel and vicious as he and a lot of the best villains really do uh scare you like that. They do make you think, wow, how mm-hmm. would I react if I were hit by something like that? Yeah. And it's just really creepy, like, how um I've said this several times about the Joker. The reason why he scares me so much is because his logic is inarguable. And you realize, hang on, I'm, I'm actually starting to agree with him here. This is This is creepy. This is wrong. I should not be agreeing with what he's saying. But everything he's saying is kind of right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> His entire tirade towards the end of the uh, the end of the movie is just how insane people act every day, mm. and yet they try to present themselves as normal. The thing is, like the Joker as a character here in this uh, rendition of the Kidding Joke is he has gone through a lot like he's tired like he's at his ropes end right about now where yeah i don't care anymore i'm I'm just gonna go one step further and just you know what whatever happens happens if the bat kills me it's gonna be fun and yeah to see him push to that limit where he actually we actually see him inflict damage to a person in the sense where usually when you see the joker he would hurt someone very very comedically with a mm. buzzer hand thingy or acid flower kind of deal. But nah, this one's just shoot you in the gut. That's not joker like. Prior to the killing joke, um, in 1986, I think, was when, um, The Dark Knight Returns was published. And I think that was the real beginning of the turning point for the Joker's character in regards to him not being a, a, a campy silly villain. Like, this is someone that we need to take seriously. This is, this is a murderer and this is, you know, he's, it needs to be taken back to, um, he's not just a gimmicky villain, you know, he's a, a tragic guy as well with the whole story that's now been, um, put on paper and now on screen as well, but it's not necessarily the backstory either. Well, it is nice that in both in both the comic and uh and the movie, he flat out says, you know, sometimes I remember it differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it keeps changing. Mm-hmm. So we don't even know if the down on his luck comedian is the real deal. Yeah. No, we we know that the whole um backstory with him being the red hood that that was introduced in um. Was it 1940? 
No. Uh, that um, was introduced in 1951 by uh, uh, Liu... Oh, I don't know how to say that name. But yeah, it's 1951. Detective Comics number... Oh, no, I'm getting confused because his first appearance was in 1940. Uh, but, but yeah... Oh! I've got it here now. The um, the man behind the red hood. It was it was uh, one six eight, I think. Yeah, February nineteen fifty one. Nineteen fifty one. Yeah, mm. and that was where um, that backstory came. So that part is canon technically, but the whole failed comedian thing and the whole pregnant wife and stuff. That's it's a possible thing. Mm. Uh, that, that's that's what annoys me so much about this story. You're like so uh, invested in this story that, and then then it's just thrown in your face. Oh, haha! It might not have happened at all. <laughs> Total troll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> yep, really. Uh, but still, um, to give the Joker a backstory like that, where he's a sympathetic <laughs> um, villain, where he has he's uh down on his luck comedian where he's just need one score to make things right for his wife and suddenly yeah. wife gets yeah. hurt and dies and he has nothing to mm. lose like mm, yeah. I don't want to sympathize with the Joker I don't even want to know the Joker's backstory no yeah the the less we know the better yeah the the whole reason why the, the Joker works as a character is, is be, because we don't know the full story behind him that we can kind of make up our own theory mm. of why he's turned out that way. And, like, in in this comic, he does the same thing. He makes up reasons why he's like that. That's why in The Dark Knight, he changes the story every time he tells people how he got his scars. And mm. it's it's just really interesting to have a, a character do that. <laughs> and means that the viewer him. can do the same thing. some... <laughs> killed a man with this thumb yeah, yeah. but still yeah. Uh, just the Joker's character in a nutshell we, the less we know the better <laughs> this is one of those situations where Did... what? I thought you guys would like to know more about the story didn't you guys want to know more about Celestia and Luna? <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah but in this well, case ne- sorry? Go ahead, neither of them is neither of them is mentally insane as yeah. far as we know true apart from Prince's <laughs> exposition <laughs> That's all she ever does. Uh, What's going to happen in this episode? I don't know. Let's ask Celestia. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but still, uh, there's one more character or key character we're forgetting, which is Jim Gordon or Commissioner Gordon. Mm-hmm. The victim of the whole story. And yeah. the Joker's plan... Aside from Barbara. Yeah, yeah true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh but, yeah, her. she's in this. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the, the plan here, or the Joker's plan here, initially is just to, well, Jim Gordon here is the everyday man. He is the, the breaking point where let me push you to a point where you'll be insane like me and you want revenge. And according to the story here, Jim Gordon wants to prove that nah, your ways are wrong. Like there's just this. Justice is correct. We should do it by the books. Yeah, by mm. the books. Oh god, that part. Well, in some ways, he is more a profile uh, counterpart to Joker than even Batman. He's the he's the guy who says we have to prove that he's wrong, and he acts as Batman's conscience. You know, there's one thing I forgot to say about Batman is that probably the more, one of the more powerful moments is when he sits down and thinks he's talking to the Joker, saying, mm-hmm. you know, I've been thinking about you and me and how this ends, and I I don't, I want to at least try and stop it before we, we reach the lethal end. Mm. I mean, he's, the Joker has had an impact on him all his life, all his career as Batman. And uh, they, they, it, the line, how can two people hate each other so much and not know a thing about one another. That's probably the Joker defining Batman in many ways. But Jim Gordon is the one who defies the Joker as the everyman. In some ways, I'm rooting for him more than I am Batman. Yeah. And in this story yeah. here, we get to see that Jim Gordon is just your regular Joe Schmo who's just doing a 9-to-5 job. He's just caught in a very, very terrible situation. More than a little. I mean... 
Were they tr- were they basically trying to drive him insane? Yeah, yeah. Through through torture. Yeah, and humiliation and just psychological breakdown. They should have done what Starlight Glimmer did. I think that scene alone horrified me more than any modern American horror film <laughs> that was to ever be created. I'm sort of wondering how the animators felt after animating that scene. Yeah. I really do. <laughs> they went after beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just another night to find job. Forget the whole thing. Well, more like there's this. Well, we 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 drew a guy getting tortured. Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Frank. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, Jim Gordon here. He's a trooper, and in the very end, where he just says that, no, we have to do this by the book. We have to follow the law. The law is is well. The law is the law. 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 <laughs> uh, but still, would you say that Jim Gordon, by that point too, is insane for doing what he did? No, I think he's. I think he's fighting the Joker the only way he knows how by by proving him wrong. We, Maddie's very right that the we there are moments where you start to agree with the Joker. You start to think, hey, he's onto something. So here's this one voice from a sane man saying, no, there's more to it than just what he see, what the Joker sees. Mm. But at the same time, do I need to ask you guys, like, this puzzles me because if you think about what he's done, why is he not dead yet? Because the justice system seems to be, uh, seems to be giving him more opportunities, which people can raise all the commentary on the justice system, but the minute you decide to kill someone without process, without, when you decide to make yourself the executioner and the jury, it doesn't stop there. I'm thinking of Under the Red Hood, another animated movie, mm. where the Red Hood, wink, wink, is asking, you know, why you don't have to do it for everyone. Why not just this guy? And Batman says, because I know if I do that, there's no coming back. Yeah, it's the one rule that he won't break. Ah, it's like how many people have, have died because of the Joker, or, or rather because Batman won't kill the Joker to stop him. He just refuses to do it. Because oh, the he's it's the whole thing when uh, Alfred says to him in the movie, "You can't save everyone," and he is trying to save the Joker from a failing justice system because it it is corrupt. It doesn't work, but they have to prove to him that it works better than having no system at all or having no faith in humanity at all. Don't ever come to America, Maddie. Don't ever come to America. Oh, I'm going I, to America next year. Oh yeah, think, you're coming for RonyCon 2017. Yeah. Dang it, I have to save up for another year. <laughs> yeah. And let's let, let's be let's be honest and fair here. America is not the only place that's struggling with its justice system. Oh, true that. Mm. But still, Jim Gordon here is the everyday man who believes in justice, and well, he is the police officer, so yay, justice. Also, he provides Batman the one chance to really rile the Joker. When Batman throws it back, actually, I just spoke to Jim Gordon. He's fine. <laughs> so maybe maybe it's just you. It's like, oh, yeah. you no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> As quote yeah. from Michael Kelso, burn! <laughs> burn. Yeah. Mm. But as you reach the end here, where the Joker faces Batman off, they exposit a few lines here and there, and when it comes near the end, they just break it down and says, the, all this song and dance that we're doing, where does it even lead? Where is it going to take us? And, well, by this point, um, the Joker's told his whole quote-unquote background story, and he doesn't really remember if it even happened that way, where he tells a joke. And anybody remembers that line or that joke? Oh, there are these two guys uh, in an insane yeah. asylum. Yeah. Yep. I can't remember who said it to me, but in in the flashback, when he comes home to his wife and says, oh, I screwed up a punchline, and I can't remember who said it to me, but they were like, oh, what if the joke that he tells at the end was the joke that he screwed up? And I thought, that's so interesting. But yeah, it doesn't really... Hmm, I don't know. But it was just his way of saying, oh... It's like you're offering me help, but it, one of two things is going to happen. 
either you're going to give up on me halfway through if I do accept the help, or I'm going to give up on myself halfway through. Well, but what's the joke? Because, <laughs> Silver, how is it goes? Oh, well, there are these two guys in an oh, insane sorry. asylum. Yeah. And they've, they've been there forever, but one night they decide to break out. And as they're on the rooftop and they can see all the way across the city, all the roofs lead to freedom. It's, it's a clear shot out. So one guy, he makes the jump and gets there just fine. The other guy's too scared to, to make the leap. So the first guy says, look, I've got, a, here's a flashlight. I'll shine a, a beam of light across and you can just walk, walk between the rooftops. And the second guy says, are you crazy? He'll turn it off when I'm halfway across. Hmm. That's the abbreviated version. The Joker yeah. drew it out an exceptional length. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I remember that part about the beaming light thing. Yeah, and that analogy or the joke that the Joker's try to tell goes both ways because it could tell um, a point for Batman or it could tell a point from the Joker's. So that is pretty insane. The Joker, pretty insane. Do tell. <laughs> Oh, indeed. It was just a really powerful moment just to see these two characters. Like, they usually you associate Batman with um, a lot. It's a lot of fights, a lot of action. Mm -hmm. It never stops. But then here's this movie, and it's just the two guys just talking. And there's just something really powerful about seeing Batman offer Joker help, and the Joker just like, "I'm sorry." It's and looks him straight in the eye, just says, I'm sorry, it's too late. You're like, Oh my gosh, this is so powerful. Like it's so sad that he just knows oh, that there's just no hope for me at all. And they I both know that wanted to hug him. Yeah. Almost. They, they they both know that there is no hope for this guy. There's no hope for redemption at all. But Batman being Batman still offers it anyway because that's who he is. So yeah, it, and this story takes place quite late on in their relationship, for want of a better word. Um, so they're they're both a lot older, and like they they know that it's it's going to end up they're going to end up killing each other eventually. And it's just it was just really cool to see that both of them, like neither of them wanted it to happen, but they both know that's what's going to happen eventually. It's just Batman's just offering him. That it was more for himself, just to make himself so he 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 knows at least I tried before the inevitable. And speaking of the inevitable, uh, <coughs> one of the most talked about aspects of this comic is the ending, mm. where they both just break down laughing, but the Batman keeps on laughing longer than the Joker, mm. as as the camera pan tilts down to the rainwater, and in the comics, it's uh, the framing of each panel is very similar. Yeah. Uh, people are asking, did Batman kill the Joker? Knowing him, nah. Mm, I don't think he did. Not from what I've seen. No. I, I don't think he did either. I, I know why people think that, and it, it is kind of implied, but no, I, I don't think so. No. <laughs> I didn't see that at all. <laughs> that would be the end of Batman. He wouldn't be Batman anymore. Yeah, one thing that people need to understand about the Batman is that one of his rule is he never carries a gun and he never kills. That is his first rule. He may take you down or he may break your bones to just make you stop, but he'll never kill. It's just like, I won't kill you, but you'll be amazed what you can live through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Mm-hmm. It's like the bit in the Dark Knight where the the gangster boss, he's got him about what four stories up or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. you dropped me from this height. That won't kill me. And I was like, I know, and just lets him go. Oh, that's just <laughs> like, like oh. ouch. I think it was only like three floors up, but still, yeah. ouch. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there, there's one comic or there's one animated movie here where I think it's Batman. Well, I forgot this one thing. It's it's the way later on in Batman's career where he comes back from. His retirement. I think it's Dark Knight Returns, was it? Where yeah. yeah, yeah. In that comic or in that movie, he off the Joker. He kills him. Yeah, yeah. But this is way later in his career where he decided to kind of uh, retire, come back again, and yeah. Technically, Batman didn't kill him. Really? He broke his neck. 
he broke his neck. Right. And the, the Joker was still alive, but it was Joker. He he moved deliberately in a way that killed him. Oh. So hmm. technically, Batman didn't. Technically. <sighs> yeah, but technically. No one else knows that because there was no one else there to see what actually happened. So mm. people would just automatically think he killed him, but he didn't. So, yeah. Nerd! <laughs> Nerd! I love you, Maddie. I love you too, Pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> but, in, but in the end, um, we end with that joke and Batman laughing and uh, that was just very uncomfortable. So, yes. yeah. Meant to be. Yeah. Which, in some ways, it's spoiled by then ending on the more optimistic rise of Oracle. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's a powerful note to end on, but then you go to this epilogue of, oh, Barbara's moving forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's really, that's not... I, I don't want to see buzzkill because it's actually optimistic and breaking a foul mood. I think that's the opposite of a buzzkill. I, I do understand what you mean, Silver. It's the impact there. Like, you're given the situation where we have to end it on a sad note, where the the Joker here is refusing refusing help from the Batman because he thinks it's too late and he gives up. And the Batman here just laughs because uh uh-huh, either I'm stupid or I have I still have faith in you. And and perfect. But yeah, having the Oracle there, like, okay, what? <laughs> It, it could have been like um, an after credits sequence of sorts. Oh yeah. But so then, yeah. but then it's a DC movie; they won't do that. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Marvel true. does that. Yeah, true. That. Uh, <sighs> yeah. But in the end, <laughs> in the end, it's it's a pretty entertaining movie. Oh boy. Mhm. Mhm. But what, what can we say beyond this point? Because from what I do understand of this, like Maddie, you say that this comic here is not canon, right? It's a standalone comic, really, but since it was published, it's been considered to be a regrounding, shall we say, of what came after. Mm. Like, everything that comes after The Killing Joke takes a lot from that, so it technically isn't standalone anymore, but it was, it's still meant to be its own thing, if that makes any sense. This comic, it, it it just turned the whole franchise around, and obviously with the the Batman movie that was in 1989, it it pulled a lot of uh, inspiration from The Killing Joke. And um, Tim Burton himself said that this was the first comic that he ever loved. So it it's weird that this comic means so much to so many people, in spite of all of the problems it has because it's not it's not perfect it's not Shakespeare it has its problems but you know it's it's so beloved and we can really see why and with this movie it had a lot to live up to and some people like it some people don't some people think it it wasn't successful um I think it was the parts that were the clean joke yes fine brilliant they changed a few things and they added a few extra bits. And well, they need to do that anyway. Could do without the whole Batgirl bit, though. Yeah. <laughs> there is one small element in the animated series that uh, animated show that we didn't talk about. the The sideshow gang mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. supports the Joker. They attack Batman. In the comic, it was just Batman and the Joker. Everyone else yeah. just sort of vanished. Mm. Uh, but here, Batman basically takes them all down. And it brought, I think, a much needed action sequence. Yeah. Sometimes, even in the middle of all this drama and, and argue about the human nature, sometimes you just want to see Batman punch a guy. <laughs> Pretty much. <Yeah. laughs> and honestly, um, if there were no action scenes in the movie, it would have been pretty dull. Like, people will be questioning, why was this movie even made if there's no action scene? We have Batman, and why is he not fighting? I did like that action scene where he's fighting all these, all of the, the, the freak show people, for want of a better phrase. You can go into this whole thing about each one of them could, like, represent certain 
inner demons and all this kind of stuff. It did need more action. It needed to be there for the for the movie. It didn't it didn't need to be there in the comic, but for a movie, it needed that scene. I think we should go for final thoughts then. Starting from the beginning, uh, Silver, what do you think? Once you get past the first 30 minutes, this is a very powerful piece, and in my eyes, a very faithful adaptation of the comic. It hits you where it hurts, it raises some uncomfortable questions, but it also offers a note of optimism, which is perhaps one of the funnier things that in this com, that in both the comic and the cartoon that are dark and stylized and showing this awful piece, here's Jim Gordon not breaking, still believing in people, still believing in justice in the book. And that gives a little ray of hope, which means a lot. I will say, in trying to draw the focus onto Batgirl, it actually took away from the comic. Mm. Because this is, Batgirl is unfortunately just a victim between these two clashing opposites. And it's really about how they're headed towards the end. It's not about her, which is both unfortunate, but also very true to the story. That's my final thoughts. All right. And Seppi, what about you? I'm still insane even after this civil discussion on an insane madman. There really isn't much for me to say other than the obvious. It's hard to swallow. I can say that much for a first-time Batman viewer, if that makes any sense. All right. Like, you should have gotten introduced with some of the nicer Batman shows, like the Batman Lego movie that's coming next year, I think. <laughs> Maddie, you need to spend more time with me. That way you can shove Batman down my throat or something. I don't know. Well, that could be taken out of context. But anyway, Maddie, what about you? Final thoughts. Oh, my goodness. I have been waiting for this movie for so long, and it didn't disappoint. I was confused with, like, the first 30 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I didn't leave the theater unsatisfied, but... I didn't have the same emotional roller coaster as I did when I read the comic. And that was one of the things I loved about the comic was that it's the only graphic novel I've ever read that made me cry. The movie didn't make me cry because a lot of the scenes that were added with the, the Batgirl kind of diluted the impact a little. I'm still going to adore it. It's not my favorite DC animated movie. My favorite DC animated movie is The Dark Knight Returns. I'm going to treasure it, but it's... um. Mixed feelings towards it, really, because it's a bit strange to say that you you love a story about someone that does such horrible, despicable things. And why do we find the character of the Joker so interesting and so fascinating? And it's just the question of, like, what would it take to make you be that way? And it's just, oh, gosh, it's just really interesting. It brings up so many questions and you just, after you read it, you just have to process it so, so much. And the, Maddie, the movie didn't really leave me feeling the same, but yeah. Either anyway. way, Maddie, don't be mm. silly. We're all mad here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Most that. everyone's mad mm. here. Yeah. And for <laughs> me and my take on it, I like this movie. It's one of those rare movies where I get to catch up or I get to know a bit more of what's going on in the DC comic line because um, comics are strange. You've got no idea where to start reading because when, like I've mentioned multiple times where something happens then, oops, no, they restart the universe. Like that's <laughs> prevalent in the movie world or the comic world where, hey, I know something. Nope, you're wrong because they rebooted it. Like we talk yeah. about Barbara Gordon <laughs> become Oracle. Nah, she's Batgirl now and she can walk. How? Because they rebooted the universe. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However that goes, it goes. But as a standalone movie and a standalone comic, it is very powerful. It does bring up a lot of dark topics that you don't really want to talk about or you don't really want to think about it. And talking with um, Lurker Cat, she brought up a few points in psychology she knows more about it but she told me one scene in the kitchen where everything's upside down it's a symbol yeah it symbolized something i don't really remember but yeah there's a lot that could go about it when you think about it a lot of cool neat stuff if you really dig into it 
and the reference at that computer screen that Batman looks at, that was cool. Mm. Yeah. I didn't notice all the actual um, screens were references to comics and movies until the second time I watched it. The first time, I missed it. Yeah. 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 But anyway, <laughs> that, that was our review of... Well, not really review. That's our discussion of the mm. ba- Batman, the killing choke. So... Yes. Uh, I say if you have the time, watch it. If you don't, well, do. Because it's a very good movie that you should watch. And talking about this movie, um, who, how many of you guys watch it in the theaters? I did. I watched it on the computer after Maddie, like, told, like, made her <laughs> review. It's like, okay, let's see if I can pirate this. Arrgh. And then I found somebody you know, had uploaded on some obscure website and I watched it from there. And you, Silva? I had plans to see in the theater, but then the the word from Comic-Con got out about the uh, opening 30, and mm-hmm. we, decide, we decided to hold off until it got a home release. Uh, all right. Which ultimately I, I think was the better choice. We could laugh to one another about the absurdity of the first 30 minutes and then get swept up in the last part of the movie. And cry, get into the fetal position, cry, <laughs> cry even more. Yeah. Yeah. Blame Maddie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as for me, I watch it at home on the computer. So, mm. yeah, I, it would be fun to watch this in theaters, but yeah, my, my theater sucks. Like, if I really want to watch all those kind of movies, I need to hit 300 kilometers away. So, yeah, not worth it. <laughs> Especially this kind of movie, yeah, not worth it. So thank you for listening, you all. And thank you for everyone here and joining me in talking about this movie. We all like it. We all despise it. We all are confused mm-hmm. about certain scenes. But still, we enjoy it. And for you at home, thank you for listening. So, Silver, what's next week's thing going to be? Well, next week, I believe we're back to episode reviews. We have traversed the break. And now it is time to talk about the return of My Little Ponies. Yay! It's something cheerful Yay. and colorful. Oh, no more dark scenes anymore. Yay! Wait, what episode are we talking about? Yeah, I, I'm opening well, it up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're opening ourselves up to Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Oh, God. Which oh is God. A, which yeah, is a, yeah. Which is a different kind of darkness. Oh, by the way, Silver, Norman, mm. Quibble uh, Pants is um, Maddie's Husbando, so... <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. Wow, alrighty then. If we're lucky, maybe Maddie could join us. But if I would not... be more than happy to join if you're talking about that episode <laughs> because I have not made a review for that episode and people keep telling me to make one and I'm like, but I'll just fan girl over Quibble because he's amazing! Anyway. Yeah, he is amazing! Yeah, we'll, we'll yes, list, list. He is basically the male mad munchkin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, so, anyway, yeah. I'll save it for the yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, uh, that's next week's thing. And thank you, y'all, for listening. Um, uh, like, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> this is Batman. Should we end it on the theme where everybody have a deep voice and just say it's their Batman? I don't think so. Right? Why, why, do, why do you want to review me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, I have been. My Sanzo. parents are dead. <laughs> uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Silver Quill. Bees, my god. <laughs> I'm Sapphire Hartong. This is my deep gruff voice. Oh my god, that hurts. <laughs> I can't do that voice, so I'm not going to. I am always the rebel. I mean, I am always mad. Munchkin. And we'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Goodbye, old chum. <laughs> Tally ho! <laughs> See ya later. Dude. <laughs> That was terrible. Oh, I'm Batman. You're terrible. <laughs> I'm not sorry. <laughs>